What's going on, y'all? Machiavelli Mills TV. Now look, y'all. This episode hurt my heart. That's what your grandmama say. It hurt my heart. This episode was really heavy on my heart for real because I wasn't expecting the episode to end like that, right? Watching season three, episode nine, I'm like, oh, man, you know, this character's got, like, he got a good redemption story going on. This, like, I was never expecting that to happen for real. And really, that's a real dark ending. If if that is, if what happened, if what I think happened really happened, that's a dark ending for real. But I want to say this. A lot of people had doubts about Lena, Lena uh, excuse me, Lena Waif's pen game and they didn't know the, what direction the show was going to go in after Reg was killed off and after Brandon was killed off. But Lena Wave has done a hell of a job with this show. Seriously. Like, as the, as the, as the, um, the season went on, every episode got better in my opinion. Now, y'all can disagree, but I feel like they got better. This episode starts off with Keisha still dealing with the, being traumatized from being, you know, being kidnapped and abducted and, and raped by a crazy, creepy dude. Like, that dude Omari, right? And she's still dealing with the flashbacks of everything and it's still haunting her, which is absolutely normal. When a girl has been victimized the way that Keisha has, it, it, it does something to the psyche. And it does, it's really weighing on her, as it should, you know what I mean? She's going to counseling now, she went to counseling, so she's trying to battle through it. We see her having these flashbacks and she's trying to do the breathing exercises to, to try to get her mind from this place. But it's something that just keeps recurring throughout the episode. It's like something more is weighing on her. It's something more is weighing on her. Like, damn, it really is really haunting her. And Kevin, her brother, is trying to get her to be, get back to the normal Keisha, the regular Keisha. But it's going to take, take a while to get back to that normal Keisha because she's been through a huge traumatic experience. Now, Kevin is young. He's just trying to hope for the best and trying to get Keisha back to normal so they can have a regular relationship between between each other. But things ain't, it's not going to just be the same overnight. And I think he's finding that out. They go and he, Keisha wants to go on a run and she wants um, her brother, she wants Kevin to run with her, you know, so she can, she doesn't feel comfortable running by herself, right? And so everything is like, okay, it's going to take a little bit of time. However, we find out some very crucial information. Keisha is not only dealing with flashbacks, she's also currently pregnant. Her abuser has impregnated her, right? And she's like, oh my God, when she finds it out, she had probably had a feeling about it for a long time. So she went to go get the pregnancy test, told Kevin to stay in, stay outside. She's just going to go get some tampons. She got the pregnancy test. And, um, like, it just, she's, she's ready to get it, get rid of the child immediately. She's like, oh, my God, I just ready, I'm ready for this to be over with. How can we just get get past this? How can we take care of this, right? She's all, all on board of taking care of this. However, towards the end of the episode, I know, I know I'm jumping ahead, um, Keisha's mom comes in and she's, she's like, oh my, she really sees Keisha um, looking up articles about what to expect in the first trimester of pregnancy. She's really reading articles and like what to expect like the first trimester or first couple of months. So her mother finds out like, man, she may be having second thoughts and it's possibly th Nina is her mother. Nina's thinking like, man, she may be thinking about having this child, you know, and Keisha tries to act like she's really not and, you know, it's like, oh, uh, you know, well, and her mother like, okay, look, we're going to get you through this. Everything will be over soon. But it, I like Lena, Lena Way putting that in there is brilliant because a lot of girls have been raped and then they try to deal with, do I want to keep this child? They become pregnant and they think, they think about, do I want to keep this child or do I want to get rid of this child? You know what I mean? And it's a battle because a mother feels like, oh my God, even though it happened in such a traumatic situation and this person was such an evil, vile person, they're looking like, man, this baby is also part me. And they want to, they think about, man, they think about really having a child because it is also part of them as well. And I think Keisha is, is struggling with that. This is something that she's seriously struggling with, right? Also in this episode, we see that um, we see that Ronnie, Ronnie is being celebrated. He is the neighborhood hero. After he has uh, helped uh, free Keisha from her abductor, he's at the church, at Papa's father's church, right? Papa's father is the reverend. They presenting him with all type of gifts and awards and giving him a whole lot of acclaim. Tracy, Jason's mom, is also coming back around, right? She's starting to cozy up to Ronnie a, little, a lot more. She's starting to look at, you know, in the first season, she was looking as if she was done with Ronnie. Like, she wanted nothing nothing to do with Ronnie. Ronnie was just this drunk. And she was going, she was, like, drowning in her sorrow from losing her son, right? And so, 
Now you see her more cozying up to Ronnie. She's saying Ronnie has changed. Ronnie's also been dealing with a lot in his life. But he's redeemed himself tremendously. And in Tracy's eyes, she's like, man, this is not the same Ronnie I used to be with. This is a really, really a, a brother on an enlightened path. And she sees that and she starts to warm up to him, right? But also, at this function, you, I'm really seeing Papa Daddy is really shysty. Yes, I said daddy. That's how we say it in Chicago. His father, Papa's father, his dad is shysty as ever. Like, he taking donations from any and everybody. At first, he was reassuring, um, you know, he brought Camille to his church and reassuring his congregation that Camille was the, the the person to vote for, for Chicago mayor. He took her money as a bribe, and he like, okay, cool. His hands was rubbing like Birdman. He was all for a small for it. He like, look, okay, you know, you got the money. I can convince my congregation to vote for you. And he gave a whole look. She let uh, Camille give a speech, and he was all bigging her up. Now, uh, Otis Duda Perry and his wife is coming around. They're giving out money all willy-nilly to the church. They didn't gave $5,000 to Ronnie. And that's just an effort, another effort to get them to, that's another effort for them to secure votes, right? But they really now, now Papa's father is endorsing Otis Duda Perry. Now he all on Duda's side, right? And it's all because Duda got that bread that Camille don't got. You know what I mean? He got that street money. And Papa, Papa's father is all for it. He welcoming it in. He's like, we can take all the money we can get. And then he says, you know, basically, Duda has worries about will your, con will your congregation believe that? And Papa's father, like, you don't got to worry about nothing about You don't got to worry nothing about that. They going to they gonna vote for you. They gonna, you don't got to worry about that because Papa knows that he has the influence over his congregation to make them believe whatever he wants them to believe. And unfortunately, this is opening the gates to the shisty side of individuals who are preachers. There are a lot of pastors who are good individuals that live the holy life, that preach the word and live by that word and try to do right by other people. But then you have other people who are in a pastoral position and are using it for monetary gain, using it to get any type of benefits that they can and are manipulating people in order to secure what they want. And that is what Papa's father, and that's the position he's in now, which is the re very reason why Papa is starting to doubt God. He's starting to doubt God. We saw him doubting God a few episodes back and he's like doubting the powers of God. And it's really because of the fact that his father is living foul and living shysty, and Papa is growing older. He's able to realize these things, right? Even at the little, um, what they had, like a little event or whatever, and um, you hear Otis Duda Perry coming up talking to him after after the program. He's like, yeah, 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 you know, um, like you know, we can get to, you, I'm gonna get your, con I'm gonna get the congregation to vote for you. And then um, Papa's father said he won another session with Miss Angela, right? I don't even remember have we seen is Angela the secretary or whatever. We may have seen her before. It probably was the pretty girl he had in the office or something earlier in the season. But he looking like he need another session with another session with Miss Angela. And then Otis Duda Perry replies, "Yeah, Angela is very good at what she does." Man, Papa Daddy out here getting his freaky. Like he getting freaky with this woman for real. He a big old freak, and he out here wilding. And he want that. He that that sound like some sexual favors he want, and he got from Miss Angela, and he wants some more of that. And he really trying to get in where he fit in with the money. And with whatever sexual benefits he can get. So it was like, man, Papa Daddy is really out here wild. He really out here foul for real, even though he's preaching a good word to the to the whole congregation. So it's looking like real crazy, right? But anyway, man, Ronnie is starting to, um, he's planning to go to Springfield to join his friends who left uh, in the previous episode. He's going out, he want to go out there with them now and lead a new life. Tracy is looking like you don't have to leave here to start a new life. Like I said before, she's starting to warm up to him, and now she's giving Ronnie some love. They got some love. They got some chemistry. The chemistry is sparking back up between the two now that Ronnie is clean and clear, and she's out of her deep state of sorrow after losing Jason. She even suggests, hey, before you leave, you can come see your granddaughter. You know, Jason's daughter, you can come see her and play with her before you leave. And Ronnie even suggests that, hey, she, Tracy come along to help him uh, spread... Miss Ethel's, uh, Miss Ethel's ashes over this little, uh, is that a pond or something like that that they're at? He even suggested they, that she come and do that. So we see them starting to mend their relationship before Ronnie is heading off to start his life elsewhere. Start off, and, and start off on a new leaf and start off on a new branch and start life fresh, right? Now we have Emmett, right? And this episode, Emmett is now, like, he is really trying to deal with the fact that he cheated on Tiff. And he's really, he's having a hard time in his conscience battle, battling this. He like, they're like, damn, like, I did something wrong, I did something foul, I slept with my co-worker. But he's trying to make things normal as possible, but in his mind, he's still thinking about it, right? Because he is sexually attracted to Dom, 
And he's attracted to her in more ways than one. I think he's attracted to her, her outside of just sex, too. You know what I mean? And he's wondering, has she, has she thought about it the same way he's thought about it? But at the same time, in his head, he knows it's wrong. Like, he was hoping that she was feeling him, like, thinking about it like he was. But at the same time, he wanted to still... He wanted to still let it put it out that it is wrong and something he don't want to do, but he's still thinking about it. You know what I mean? He's still having them flashbacks about that moment that they share. Don reassures him, I'm not like them little girls that you be dealing with. I ain't thought about it at all. I've moved on. You know what I mean? Look, it is what it is. But she's still throwing him hints about how good he is at sex. And he, you know what I mean? And she talking about how good she is. And she's like, you know that. And he like, damn, like he's still getting rhythm from her, but he's, he's still getting rhythm from Dom. <clears throat> But he still feel, feels guilty about what happened, right? So he at home, and he laid back, and he watching his baby, and Tiff um, laid up sleep. And, um, like, he does something out of guilt. Like, really, Emmy went and got that ring for Tiff. He loves Tiff, and he appreciates everything that Tiff does for him. I don't think that man is not ready to marry Tiff at all. Like, at all. You know what I mean? He did it out of guilt. He got her, he got her a ring because he felt guilty about what happened with him and Dom. And he doesn't know how to bring it up to Tiff. He don't know how to talk about it. He want to move past it as best as possible. So what better way to move past it and try to redeem himself by marrying her, right? He got all, you know, he got different kids from different women. He got a history of being wild out here in the streets. The best way for him to be off the hook uh, in his mind with this whole situation is to marry or propose to Tiff. You know what I mean? And um, he plans to propose to Tiff at the opening of his restaurant with Dom. Him and Dom are, you know, the open, opening up a restaurant together. And I'm knowing, like, you know, I'm thinking in my head, is Dom going to give up? Is she going to really kind of, like, is her whole chemistry with, with Emmy going to reveal that something happened in front of Tiff? Because she's like, you know, I need some inspiration for the name of the uh, restaurant. And she like, let me know if you need any inspiration or whatever, right? And I was like, damn, like, that's real flirtatious, Dom, in front of his lady. Like, come on, man, how stupid do you think Tiff is? She going to catch on, which is what... Jada, um, Emmett's mother says, like, look, Tiff ain't dumb. She gonna catch on to what's going on, so you better come up with a good lie or whatever to get yourself out of this situation, right? And I find it so funny to me, though, right? Because at the opening of the restaurant, we see uh, Darnell, who is uh, Emmett's father. Emmett's father reminds me of the smooth old heads in Chicago, the real player type that still can pull a young girl when he wants to, still can pull a girl, a woman in her 40s, an older, a older woman looking at him, he can pull them from all different age ranges, right? And he come and see Dom, he's like, oh my God, and I think he might have got word, I don't know if he know that Emmett messed around with her in particular, but he knows, like, this is a fine woman in here. And the way he ended up flirting with her, talking with some, they, they going back and forth engaging, he talking some, look at us, look at us. I'm dying laughing because that's exactly how a lot of them old head dudes, like like in their 40s or their early 40s or mid 40s, that's how they be flirting with the women. Look at us, girl. Look at us. Look at what we doing here. Like, and I'm laughing because it's like it reminds me of some old head dudes in the shot. But um, yeah, man, Emmett is really he, that man ain't ready to marry that girl at all. He's just really trying to battle with his guilt, and the best way to get past it is to propose to this woman, and he know that. So now he's proposed. At the opening of the restaurant, which I'm like, damn, like, I don't know, like, is that the, you know what I mean, is that the place to do it for real? Like, you know, but I guess he looked like it's a big milestone in his life, you know what I mean, a big moment for him and his family to, like, probably start some type of, uh, to start some type of good, good money rolling in, and he guess he wanted to do it at that point and propose, but his baby mama's even looking all shiesty and looking side-eyed, because they looking like, they they looking like they wanted to be the one Emmett proposed to. They looking like they mad, like they still feeling Emmett. And Dom looking like she told him congratulations, but he looking like, you okay? Like, he wanted, like he's still wanting her to feel some type of way about him and Tiff, even though he proposed. Like, he really still wanting something to still be there between him and Dom, you know what I mean? Which is like, that's how you know that boy is not ready to marry that woman. But he's still trying to take that, he's still trying to take that ticket, you know, like he, want, like he really, like he really, really wanted, right? Um, in this episode, too, we see Jake. Jake and um what's the what's his what's Jake's brother's name, man? Uh is it Trig or something? What's the boy's name? Godly. Trig or something, I think his name is. I'm trying I forgot the boy's name. But anyway, Jake and his older brother, Jake has left Duda and he's trying to start a new life with his brother. But um, you know, like he after learning that Duda has something to do with Reg getting killed, he wanna hurt Duda. He ain't he don't fool with Duda at all, and he wanna do something that can smear his name in the best possible way. 
he know dude I'm running for mayor. So he like, okay, look, I know it's some incriminating evidence back at the crib that he was staying at with dude I. I'm going to slide back over there and get him bumped out of this election and make his life miserable, right? And his brother know what's going on, and he with it too. Luke James' character, he all with it. He goes to the house. He try to get into the safe. Um, Duda's wife sees him, and she's like, you, it's, it's bogus. That he said, you know you can't get to no, it's, it's crazy to try to break into a safe without knowing the code. And she gives Jake the code to the safe, right? This is, uh, this is indicating a break between the relationship of Duda and his wife, which would show why they are estranged. They're on two different accords, right? She is trying to be all adamant and hands-on in this campaign. He looking like, look, let me take the lead. You sit back. You give me advice when necessary. You look pretty, but let me take the show. At the whole, at the time that they were um at the church at Papa's dad church, she getting out every single word. He can't even get a word in because she taking over the whole campaign. Dude, I'm not liking that. So they are at odds right now. You seeing a rift between them, and knowing that she gave him the code, if Dude, I find that out. Oh, man, sure they going to have hell to pay. Because they didn't win and gave whatever evidence that they have, some pictures or some really incriminating information. They didn't gave it to Camille, um, Lena, Waif, Lena Waif's character. They didn't gave it to her campaign manager. So now he got all these incriminating documents or whatever in his hand. And, every, like, dude, our whole life can turn upside down. And this is what Jake wants. Jake, like, I'm going to make his life, his life hell since he made my life hell by letting my brother get hit up. You know what I mean? So... You see this whole thing going on, right? And then you got um, uh, what's my boy name? Kevin is trying to get back in, back in good with uh, Gemma. He really trying to get back into you know trying to get her them to be back talking again at some point, right? But Gemma dad ain't going for it. He like nah, bro. You was in my house, unadvised, ill-advised. I'm not letting y'all communicate. So he looking at all the text messages. He trying to find a way to get back talking to her even after they had that little whole rip of rip. Rift about her telling people about his sister being missing or being abducted. And so he's trying to find a way to get back in, right? Um, so the episode is like a, it's a whole lot going on. Keisha is pregnant, trying to figure out what she want to do with it. But then we also see that earlier on in the episode, right? There's a part when Ronnie is being presented with awards and gifts. And then speaking of Ronnie with high praise... We see a young man in there, you know, really talking about, like, F Ronnie and, you know, no matter if he found that little B, talking about if he, no matter if he found Keisha, he don't give a damn what Ronnie do. Ronnie still is fouled out here. He's a murderer and so on and so forth. He storms out of the church. Papa's father like, never, never mind him, never mind him, right? Ronnie is taken back by it, but he really trying to move forward in his life, you know what I mean? He's trying to be positive. So he puts it out of his mind. He puts the whole situation out of his mind. Um... Trying to move forward, right? And so, in this episode, we see Ronnie. Uh, well, at the end of the episode, you know, Ronnie, well, excuse me, Emmett has opened up the restaurant. We see my man, Lil Real Howery, Chicago's own man. Shout out to Lil Real, man. He's from out west, man. I'm from out south, but Chicago is Chicago, for sure, for sure. So, Lil Real come through. I'm like, like, Real is in this episode. I'm like, every time I see Real, I want Real, I want to laugh because Real just look like the dude that just super, super hilarious. Like, this dude is wild, boy, I'm telling you. But, um, so, yeah, they, they all, so Tracy and, 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 and Ronnie are eating together and everything. You know, they just having a good little moment together. We see uh, Tiff is excited about her engagement ring, even though it was super, super duper small. It's probably, you probably need a microscope to look at it. And Darnell is making fun of the ring and so on and so forth. But she is so happy that Emmett is giving her this ring because it's, it's a symbol of his love and appreciation for what she, I guess, she's been doing for him and how, like, you know, she been staying down with him even through the times of him living with his mama and trying to get on his own two feet, right? And so, you know, it's like, okay, cool. Everything is going along and people are trying to trying to move past it, right? At the end of this episode, Ronnie is walking with Tracy and I'm looking like, oh, man, I'm thinking in my head, I'm thinking we're going to have a whole little situation where Ronnie go back to Tracy crib and they finna get it popping. I'm thinking like, they're going to get it popping before he leave because he didn't seen him play with the granddaughter. He gave uh, um, the granddaughter's mother, Jason's girlfriend, he gave her, I think he gave her that $5,000 check that Duda gave him. You know what I mean? So he's he looking out and she, like Tracy is becoming smitten with him. She's saying like, oh my God, this is this is the dude I fell in love with from the jump. So I'm thinking they about to go back to the crib, crib, excuse me, to the crib and get it popping, right? As they walking off in this episode down the alley, eating some food, all you see it, bah, bah, bah. Gunshots out of nowhere. I'm like, fam, no. 
No, hell no. Like, nah, this can't be happening right now. This can't be happening. And it looked like Ronnie got shot in the head, y'all. Like, I really do think he got shot in the head and his chest. And if he did, it's like, oh, my God, man. Y'all really finna do this? Y'all finna kill Ronnie after Brandon didn't get killed? Well, we know why Brandon had to get killed. After um, Aunt Ethel didn't pass away, after Reg didn't get killed, like, y'all, come on, don't kill, don't kill Ronnie. Now, like, this had the, the redemption story got to be full circle. You know what I'm saying? I'm hoping, like, and it's like, I, like, I don't even cry when I'm watching TV. I'm not a crier, right? I'm not a crier when I'm watching movies and stuff that are really, really impactful. But when I saw that, I'm like, come on, it made me want to share some tears. Like, come on, a brother is really getting his life in order. And he get hit like that so viciously. And dude was like, that's for what you did to Coogie. This brother took Ronnie's life because of him taking Coogie's life, right? And the dude sat there in broad daylight and said it and had it, ain't had nothing covering his face, nothing but a little hood. And like, he looked like he walked off. He did it so, like, he just came up and shot him like it was nothing. I'm like, bro, you know you're going to get caught, right? In my head, I'm thinking that. But it seemed like he probably just got away scot-free and walked away. Like, what the hell? But nonetheless, man, like, I'm like, come on, don't take Ronnie up out of here, man. Don't take Ronnie. Don't do this, man. This man was on a road to redemption, and it was looking real good for his character. But unfortunately, now we're looking like, man, he he, he probably possibly might be gone. Hopefully, this is just Lena, Lena Waif's ploy or her pin game using a way for Ronnie to, to still stay in Chicago, even with him saying he wanted to leave and start a better life. Hopefully this is just a ploy for him to stay in Chicago and for him and Tracy to get closer and possibly get back on the same accord that they were. We know before Jason passed away and so on and so forth or whatever. Hopefully that's just a ploy. I'm hoping Ronnie ain't going after everything he's been through this whole season, right? But I want to point this out. When the young brother kills Ronnie and says this is for Coogie, Lena Waif, that's excellent. Lena Waif is, is displaying the circle of life, the circle of chaos that, that occurs in the, hoods, in the hood every single time, right? A person gets killed by one person, retaliation comes, it's a never-ending cycle of bloodshed back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, right? Because Ronnie could very well ha could have had somebody, and possibly even if he's dead, even if he is dead, I don't think nobody's going to come and try to do something, but... He could have possibly had somebody willing to kill that little dude. Kill that, kill that little shorty for killing him. And it never ends. The cycle of violence never ends. Right? Coogie was killed two seasons ago. Right? But it's still, it's still fresh on that kid's mind. He willing to take a life for a life. Right? And it, just, it shows how ignorance in the hood spirals out of control and keeps going. Right? Bloodshed just keeps going. And blood's just, blood is on everybody's hands and just keep on going Going in a cycle. It's going on in sight and uh it's going on in a cycle. It's a never ending cycle. And uh it's really sad to see this. But Lena Waif put that in there as a point to show that you know what? Sometimes people's people people's sins catch up with them, unfortunately, even if they could redeem themselves, but really it's I think her purpose was showing how the cycle of violence continues in the hood and how it goes on, even when you might think the rest of the hood is forgiving you. It's always one person, some people harboring those feelings of hate for you and try to take you out. And then it continues, okay, well, you kill this person. I'm going to come back and kill y'all or kill one of your people. Kill you or kill one of your people in return, in retaliation. And it keeps going. It's just a, uh, it's just a repeating cycle. And uh, it, that's really sad about the hood, for real, where stuff, stuff that goes on in the hood. But I'm going to just clap it up for Lena Wife. Le excuse me, Lena Wife, man. I'm going to clap it up for Lena Waite. That's a job well done with this season. A lot of people were scared about what was going on and what's going to happen. But um, she's doing a hell of a job with this season. I believe it's only 10 episodes per season. So I think we got one more episode to go before season 3 ends. I'm wondering how season 3 is going to end and how what's going to come of this. If, is Keisha going to give birth to Is she going to allow? Uh, is she going to keep the baby? Is Ronnie still living? Um, what's gonna happen with Emmett? Is uh is Tiff gonna find out about him and Dom? Is he gonna slip up again, or is she gonna overhear some conversation between them talking? Cause when him and em when him and Dom, Emmett, Emmett and Dom were talking about what happened, like they talking about it so loudly, his mama just walked right in there. I'm thinking, that, damn, Tiff didn't hurt him. He's gonna blow up all in his face. But I don't know. That very well could set up pop. It, it that could set up that situation or scenario happening uh in this next episode, man. So I'm anxious to see this next episode. But um. Great, great episode by Lena Waithe. 
Uh, y'all tell me what y'all think about the episode in the comment section below. Like, uh, like the videos, like all my videos, subscribe to the channel. I, I appreciate everybody that's been supporting me and rocking with me the long way, the extra strong way. I love y'all and I rock with y'all too. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend about Machiavelli Mills TV. I'm out. Peace.